This episode of the Capsule in Conversation is brought to you by WeCure. A leader in health tourism, WeCure offers specialist EMDR trauma treatment whilst you reflect and heal in the Mediterranean. Reset your mind and well-being. Speak to WeCure. WeCure.co.uk forward slash Capsule. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Capsule in Conversation. I'm Natalie Anderson and today I'm joined by actress and soon to be ice queen, the super gorgeous Faye Brooks to talk stepping out of your comfort zone, skating away from the cobbles and embracing the challenges of change. So settle down, turn us up and get ready to join in with our conversation. Hello all, I hope you're all well and have had a lovely week. Mine has been a tale of two halves as earlier in the week I got back from a fabulous work trip to sunny Corfu. It was so hot and lovely and it was so nice to be faced with a broken boiler for four days which has meant no heating or hot water. So it's been back to basics in our house as we've been boiling pans for washes and layering up at night. We've even gone old school and had the hot water bottle out to warm us up. I don't actually like the cold. (laughs) However, someone who's going to have to get very accustomed to it is today's very special guest, actress and soon to be Dancing on Ice star, the gorgeous Faye Brooks. Hello, Faye. Hello. Oh, thank you so much for being with me here in the studio today. It has become, it's become a bit of a privilege to actually get people here with lockdown. (laughs) I'm honestly, I'm thrilled that you asked me and this is my first ever podcast. So I'm honestly honoured. Oh, yay. Oh, yeah. Look at that. We've, We've popped a podcast. <laughs> now, as I mentioned in my introduction, many of us are still reeling from your departure from Coronation Street, oh. where you played the brilliant Kate Connor for five years, taking on some of the soap's most topical and contentious storylines in recent years, and earning you the accolade of Best Newcomer at the National Television Awards. You've also taken on notable roles starring in Shrek, Grease, and Legally Blonde, and have most recently been announced as part of the 2020. 21 class of Dancing on Ice alongside my lovely surrogate boy Joe Warren Plant which will <laughs> air live in January. How are you feeling about it? Honestly just like so excited to get back to a schedule if anything because everyone knows this year has gone to pot and yeah. um, 2020 has not been what we expected it to be. And to know that I'm beginning 2021 doing Dancing on Ice <laughs> is insane because I never imagined I'd be doing a reality show. Yeah. It's my first one as well. I've never really thought that this would be my path. But I also, during lockdown, opened my eyes to you know opportunities and just thought, let's embrace the year of yes. And I just went with it. And also as well, I mean, you say it's a reality show, but ultimately th- there's... There's different forms of it, isn't there? I mean, yeah. for me, I think things like Dancing on Ice and Strictly, they have a skill set yes, attached to them. 100%. And even the Bake Off, you know, even Celebrity yeah, MasterChef, yeah. they've got things where you've really got to learn a skill. And even though you are, you know, you're, you're a dancer, you're mm. a trained dancer, you've trained at, um, at college and uh, um, at drama school, it's still a completely different thing getting on the ice. So, yeah. you know, do you not see it as more of just as an extension of your training? Training. I hope so. I mean, I have got a little bit of, you know, childhood experience with ice skating and using it as like a little hobby and having that that bonding with my family at the weekend when we'd all just go to the ice skate together. And I love that tradition of this. It's a sport at the end of the day. Like, yeah. But I have to remember that it was a part of my childhood. And so it's natural to just kind of get on the ice and just go for it. I might fall over, yes. Am I gonna get bumps and bruises? 100%. But the idea of um, extending my training, I just can't see the two together yet because I haven't actually met my pro or done any of the basics and that's all to come. And honestly, I am excited. I am honestly like thrilled that I was, I'm gonna be a part of the show. I think the cast is insane. The people that I'm gonna be like, actually doing a competition with I think it's high like the stakes are up there and so 
yes, my training hopefully will come in handy with my balance and posture and mm. but I think I'm gonna have to retrain my brain do you think as well um that because you've had some training and you do have you know theater experience mm. do you are you worried that that'll go for you or against you like yeah. especially with the judges yeah maybe a bit of both like I think they'll be critiquing me because I should be pointing my feet in those boots and I should be <laughs> extending my arm and I should have better posture. I don't know. But then I've also got the delight of John Barrowman and I hope yes. he's on my team because he's all the way like musical theatre through and through. And so I just hope he's rooting for me. <laughs> I'm sure he will be. Yeah. Oh, John loves, he loves to be fabulous. fabulous. <laughs> so I'm sure I he will that be. Man. Yeah. I can't wait to meet him. I can't wait to meet everyone. And do you think as well, you know, the, the brightness, the spark, the sequins yes. is um I know it would be for me. You're getting me like, really, yeah, like, really excited now. Yeah. Can't I? Oh, and this is good because it's been such a depressing year. I'm oh, glad that somebody's know. excited. Let's just bring some joy yeah. to those living rooms for people at home that can't get tickets to come and see the show. We still don't know what's going to happen with the live shows. We really yeah. don't. So I just think let's start the year with a bang. A bit of sparkle, glitter, sequins. I'm so ready for it. I think everybody will be as well, won't mm. they? You know, it's January. It's a new start, a new year. And I think we will all really be ready for some something that's uplifting yeah. and beautiful to watch and fun and yeah. you know there's there's got to be as well an element of um fearlessness in some of the moves that you're going to have to um, perform how are you feeling about that are you quite a brave person in life anyway I would love to think that I'm brave but behind closed doors I'm probably a little bit of a worrier I don't show that side right. to my personality. I don't. I, I think we have to guard ourselves in this industry. Mm. It's cutthroat. Yeah, I remember when I was young and I told my parents that this was the path I wanted to choose. And to be honest, they weren't 100% sold that this was what I should be doing. They were like, do you have a backup plan? You know, are you going to be able to afford this? And what about when you're not working? You know, there was all of these mm. kind of pros and cons to this world. And now that I'm kind of going into a brand new world that I've never, ever imagined to be in, I'm going to have to be even tougher. And I'm probably going to have those those days where I, I'm going to struggle and people are going to see the vulnerable side to me that maybe I haven't been able to show because I've been portraying characters or, you know, that character has been going through a different struggle that I have to try and relate to. And that's, I think, going to be really interesting. The first time that I'm going to be kind of stripped back. Yes. Yeah, so basically, um, there is that worry. I mean... <laughs> I can completely relate to that. You know, putting yourself out there as you mm. when you're used to acting and being somebody else. And you you do have that, you know, that kind of security of going, well, that's not me. I'm just playing somebody else. Yeah. And you have that security blanket. But when it's, it is you and it's it's you out there that's being edited in particular, you know, that is, that is quite a scary um, prospect. But, you know, ultimately, I think... Again, that bravery, you've chosen to, to take yeah. it on as a challenge. You can only do your best. And so hopefully exactly. it's all going to play out brilliantly. But in terms of, um, you know, the actual moves themselves, yes. are you are you a bit of a, um, are you a, an adrenaline junkie? Are you somebody that would throw themselves out of a plane? I or are you love like, uh. the idea of like trying everything once. You know, like YOLO. Yeah. I do love that. And I think I get that from my family. Um, they're totally like this, you know, typical Mancunian, um, very, very close knit family. And there's lots of us too. So it's very loud all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and they always are 100% behind me whenever I go for anything. Um, this is the one that they were, I was surprised at how excited they were, possibly more so than I was. <laughs> um, my mum screamed when I told her down the oh. phone. So the, the joy that I'm going to get from them seeing me go through this journey will be interesting but they definitely have been the ones to encourage me to just go for it and I completely believe that you only live once you know you may as well just enjoy the moment try and be present um and that's what I'm gonna take into my training because at the end of the day I do love a challenge especially physically and I think mentally you can overcome it that Th those to me go hand in hand. So I'm totally up for whatever they throw at me. Because I'd be scared to death. You know, when I think about the ha the headbanger, 
Oh God, yeah, I'm going to make you laugh now. Go on, so I tell walked me. into the I walked into the room on that day that we were doing the photo shoots and they were hiding each other from you know for all the contestants having to scurry around with their runner that they, they were like I sh- I'm sure Mylene Class was in front of me and they were just like no no look at me look at me don't look over there look at me and just, so this whole day was um, interview photo shoot and then constant kind of back and forth between what music you like so they can interpret into your dances and then asking the general questions about what do you want from the show and I threw myself in there and was like I want to do a headbanger like I do (laughs) when I first used to watch the show I used to just like actually cover my eyes if I was watching a scary movie because I couldn't bear it but now I know it's going to be me I don't know I love the idea of just like Let's see what happens. Like, I've got to trust my partner. He's a pro. He's done this a million times. I'm in good hands. Like, let's just see what happens. And if I I get too scared, then then it's my fault. And I'm an idiot and I look like the fool. But I'm totally up for it, honestly. I love how trusting you are. I love that. Yeah, that's my problem. I'm too (laughs) trusting. I have this, like, for every time, like you, whenever I watch it, I'm like, oh, my God, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. (laughs) And then I always think about poor Kay Burley when she, like, smacked her cheek on the floor. And I think, oh, God, no, that would be me. I would be the unlucky one. Yeah, definitely. With this unlucky, you know, it's a 13th series (laughs) for Dancing on Ice. I'm like, guys, we've got to turn it around. Let's make it positive. It's like lucky number 13. Come on. And how do you feel about the the prospect of the Bolero as well? I think that would be an honour. Like, it's a, a huge historical moment, not mm. just for Torval and Dean, for British history. And I just think that would be my goal. I'm sorry, but I'm totally in it. I know Joe said that I'm in it to win it, but I'm taking it. <laughs> oh, I know. You've put me in such a difficult position. He could, he yeah. could be in the final with me. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, that'll be it. I'll have to say that now then. Yeah. So Joe Warren I do love that Faye boy in, in the final I do. together. Yeah. That That's, would be amazing. You can just root the pair of us on. Definitely. I mean, going back to bravery, do you think that you apply um, that kind of throw yourself in their attitude to your characters? Because, you know, when you think about Kate, she was she was a very complex woman. And mm. some of the storylines that you and Bavna were, were given, Bavna Limbaccia, were, were extremely controversial. Mm. And it takes an awful lot to take that on. Because I know that obviously when you go up and you see the producers and they ask you about it and they, they do kind of, you know, they want your response, don't they? They want to help you through as much as possible. Did you, you know, at any point think, oh God, I'm not sure about this or, or the backlash that could come from this? Because, you know, it was it was the first time we'd seen that kind of relationship yeah. on screen. I definitely, when Babna and I were there, uh, with the producers and they brought this to us, I was, um, again, you know, you're handed something that's it's groundbreaking and mm. it could be a voice for so many other women. And I took that as another challenge. And so I, I knew with Bavna, we'd been working together for a year, that I trusted her and I to tell the story so truthfully and so honest that nothing could go wrong in my eyes because we were just going to do our best. And... At the end of the day, we took our time. We made sure that we were guided the right way, whether it be um, doing certain interviews for said voices mm. or talking to our director about how much time we might need for a certain scene. All those things. Everyone was delicately like in it. They were so like sensitive to the subject. And I think that's all it took was just for that team to come together and to know that we're doing something that's that's huge, um, but not to put it so far up on that pedestal that it's not achievable. Mm-hmm. Because I think Bavna is a wonderful actress and she was taking on probably the brunt of it because it was more groundbreaking for her side religiously. Yeah. And I know that we had a lot of fan mail and with that comes the the negative side, mm-hmm. the fans that aren't so uh, supportive of the journey that these two characters have gone on. But at the same time, we are coming to work every day knowing it's a job. This is the script, this is the story. And we have to come and just, and like I said, give as much truth and heart to that story and hopefully give it justice because we're both straight characters as well in in real life he she is happily married and i was there at the wedding and it was so beautiful but as a character Mm. you know it's it's complex for um rana and and then obviously with kate it was totally um 
it wasn't taboo in her household. It was it was as if it was celebrated who she was. Mm. And I'd wish that for so many girls who had written to me because we get quite a lot of young fans watching the show and we made sure that we answered every single letter. We made sure that we reached out to let them know this is what's going to happen and this is what we hope you support. And, and I, do, I did love that about the show. I miss that about, you know, being a part of the soap world because it's like no other it, it really is, like is. No other. and and you know you do have a responsibility that's given to you yeah. and it's a privilege to get that responsibility as an actor mm. um where you are actively in people's living rooms every day and yeah. you're you know you you have you have that opportunity to change people's attitudes and people's perceptions mm-hmm. and also you know put a real um spotlight on certain subjects you know you be, between the, the pair of you you became such and are even now such a, a figurehead yeah. for you know the LGBTQ plus community and and have really um, stood by that as well and still you know actively campaign and yeah. you know work together for that because as you said you're you're speaking other people's truths mm. you know and playing that out however you know at the times I know personally how demanding a soap schedule is did, yes. did it have ever any um, impact on your own well-being and your own mental health um yeah especially I think if personally you're not in a good headspace Mm. how are you meant to take on something that is completely the polar opposite to yourself and do it with justice and truth and heart all the things that I've said that Babna and I try to channel every day um, I had to trust that, you know, she had my back and I had hers. And if we were, you know, close to tears at the end of the take and just needed to let let it out, like we would, we would hold each other and even after they'd yell cut because I can't, I'm actually getting emotional talking about I know, about I'm it. looking at you and I'm Sorry. thinking me as well. <laughs> I, went, I went through so much with her on that show and I loved, I loved my job there. So... God, did not expect that to happen. I'm so sorry. No, it's um, fine. But you're not the first. I think it's because um, she cared and yeah. I cared. And when you meet someone like that, it's quite rare. And because of that, what came out of it was uh, unbelievable. And um, I think where we were both mentally at in life at that time, I know Babna was ready to move on and yeah. be challenged in other ways. And I totally like was behind her 100% like, please go, be, do, conquer, whatever. But when I was there uh, um, being faced with those storylines, I think personally, I probably wasn't in the best place. Mm. And I, channel- I channeled that into my character to help myself get through it. Because I think when you focus on work, it does get you through hard times. Definitely. It's kind of quite cathartic in that sense. Very much and so. You, like therapy. Yeah, it, it is. It keeps my mind preoccupied. If I've got a million lines to learn, great. Because keeping busy kind of takes me away from my reality check. But how does that go against you in real life? Is that you needed to check in with you first. Mm. And then face the problems that really needed to be dealt with before you go into work but at the same time I don't know whether that's catch 22 like was it gonna make me the worst actress was it gonna make the best actress I don't know because that's the thing isn't it when you when you are channeling whatever it is that you've got going on into a scenario or or bringing as much truth to it as Mm. possible so you know if you are in a vulnerable place in a your personal life, yeah. you're able to understand somebody else's vulnerability mm-hmm. and therefore can portray that. And however, your brain is, is you know, it doesn't necessarily know when to switch off. Yes. And so you are yes. like going through it all and, you know, it's all kind of coming out of you. And I think what, what really sticks out to me from the conversation both with Bavna and with yourself, mm. which I'm having now, is that it was an incredibly special time for the pair of you and something that you, as you said there, you kind of clung on to each other because there were only you two experiencing it. And yeah. it was it was groundbreaking. Mm. And when it's just, it's like doing a doing a marathon with somebody next to you and it's, it's just you two yes, that experienced it. Yes. Then you go home and they go- Cheering each other yeah, on. Yeah, and then you go home and you're like, I did the marathon. You're like, oh, great. Well done. And yeah. you're like, oh, you didn't do it with me. You don't know how it feels. Exactly. And it's that I thing. felt like we couldn't really go home and express how it felt. And because we film so far in advance, you know mm. how it works, that really you're going home at the end of the day and you kind of don't know where you stand. Like, was that any good? Will they use that? Will they edit it? 
Um, there was even times when I think we were calling each other up just to kind of get that whole, uh, not pat on the back because I don't think we strive for that. I don't, I think we knew when it was right on set, when it felt just raw and as if we'd given it our best shot. And I was totally there for her. She wanted to go again and vice versa. But yeah, calling each other up at the end of the day and just going, so tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we just have to dust it off and start all over again. And you form such an intense relationship with the people that you work with and they do become your your sounding board, yeah. you know, as like you say. Um, and, and I think as well that you had such weight on your shoulders, the pair of you with this storyline because you were you really wanted to do it justice and, and wanted to speak for those people that mm. weren't being heard. I mean, do you think as an actor, it's really important not to shy away from difficult storytelling um, and that the, the arts do have a responsibility to, uh, as a platform, you know, to change people's attitudes and mindsets? Yeah, we're a force to be reckoned with. Like, that's what it's all about. You know, music and art and dance, it's a form of expression. And it's for every gender, generation, religion, for everyone. I think it's got us through this year, mm. if I'm being really honest. And without it, I don't know where we'd be. So for an artist to shy away from a big storyline or something that was controversial, I'd say, no, let's go for it because we don't know who what that could do for just one person, mm. How what life we could change, what one person could we actually change their whole perspective as well. We could be helping someone um, through a difficult time as well and that's always relatable. The amount of young girls that I've had write to me saying that they felt confident enough to come out to their family was unbelievable like the numbers were insane and they have stayed with me those those girls that have followed me and and been inspired by Kate and Bav no, sorry Kate and Rana's story by myself and Bavna telling that that story of that love story I just think that's that's beautiful like why should we be shying away from from that art that that is amazing I mean we've seen in the news this week that the, the <laughs> chancellor has suggested that um, I'm gonna laugh that yeah, off people even though you know he was mm. referring to the art sector need to look for other opportunities or uh, retrain to find jobs now you've you trained at Guildford School of Acting on a three-year course mm -hmm. alongside hundreds of hours yes. in classes as a young as a young girl what do you make of that statement uh, jaw-dropping that the government think that uh, the amount of people that are in our industry as well is in it's unbelievable but for that amount of people to retrain and go and put themselves into a different field of work, that means that we're competing with the other people that have been made redundant, lost mm. their job, or the company's gone bust. So I have no idea how that could even be a thought, how they could fathom that idea for us as just because for me, I feel like if you've trained and you've decided that this is what you want to do, you must really want to work in this world because it's not easy and it's difficult hours and you might end up having to be away from family and friends and loved ones. And it's a, a route you decide to take. It's, it's, it's your decision and you go with it with that gut feeling of this is, this is all I can do. This is who I am. And hopefully you gain other skills in the process. Like I didn't think that I would be a singer and dancer when I was acting as a child, but I grew those skill set because I knew it would add more strings to my bow. And lo and behold, I've got to do so much more with my life and so much more productions, whether it be straight acting, theatre, TV, now, uh, a TV show that's live on ice. Like this is incredible and it gives so much joy to people. Why would we now take all that away and I decide to go and get a nine to five that's not gonna fulfill me, that's not going to give me the same joy, purpose, whatever you want to call it. But that to me is unbelievable. Like, but also I, I find it really insulting that it almost, um, there's no value on kind of what we bring. And yet, if you look at, as you said, you know, what's really kept people going mm -hmm. through this time, whether it's whether it's podcasts, whether it's yeah. a, a Netflix series, you know, people have been binge watching yeah. this, that and the other. Huge dramas and, have come out of this. People are like, did you watch that? You know, yeah, people have like normal people. discussion. Yeah, that, that have opened up conversations as well. And, and you know, even even last night, I was watching um, ITV's Out of Their Skin, which was um, the series, the, the football um, documentary series about racism within football, and that 
for me, was just such an important documentary to really show people what has gone on in the football, in the sporting industry, mm. and to shine a light on Im- really important matters. You know, it's Black History Month as well. Yeah. And we're, we're, all, we're talking about this because the art sector are, are coming together to show people and to highlight really important situations that could hopefully change people's attitudes, you know, challenge discrimination. So to suddenly feel like there's no value on Mm. what we do. And equally as well, you know, when people go to the theater, they stay in a hotel, they go to a restaurant. It keeps those, um, you know, sub kind of economies, those, those, those yeah. little pockets of of towns and wherever they all tie in all together, tie in together mm-hmm. that contribute to the economy. I mean, and then again, like I said, I look at your storyline in Coronation Street and think about how many people that you've helped with your portrayal of Kate and and we just don't. It, and he just now it's like, like a smack oh, well, you, across you, the yeah, face. It's like, kind of no. like doesn't really matter what yeah. you do. I mean, I did find it very. Um, how yeah. did you feel when you saw it? I was a bit like. Did he actually just say that? And yeah. then I tried to look it up and go, he, he can't have just said that. He, he didn't really mean that. And then I looked into it. I was like, no, no, he actually did. <laughs> I read it and was like, wow. Yeah. I was speechless. Like, wow. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, I don't want to sound like some whingy kind of uh, arty person. No. But it's just the fact of, you know, we have so many different industries. Like, it's like the travel industry. You know, that's really important as well. And yeah. I know I know, we can't ha- help absolutely every industry, mm. but it's the suggestion of, you know, just, oh, retrain. I mean, again, don't get me wrong. I'm all about the side hustle as well. Of you know, I, I think in our industry, we're used to having to delve into other things to get us through, you know, yeah. to the next bit. I mean, am I, I'm right in thinking that you're massively into fitness. Totally. And something that that, you if might I hadn't that. had that in my... In side for me during lockdown or even just you know the support from my partner or friends that love it just as much as I do I don't know how I would have survived mentally because auditions were coming through like we said talking about this um industries that are dying I know that a lot went bust um I I delve into other projects that I thought would be um, helpful. I know a lot of people started doing live Q and A's on Instagram and Facebook just to kind of give the younger generation an idea of how to get into this world and what it's really about and what have I learned. You know, they were all really um, interesting things for me that I discovered during lockdown. But for my fitness, like 100%, I started looking at becoming a PT. I thought that that was a really um, interesting route because I'm so active. I've danced. Um, I know a lot about the the body. Um, I think going back to the training, it's a hell of a lot more than I thought it would be. It's yeah. like training to be a nurse. It, honestly, <laughs> it's a lot all of, the, of reading. The, um, the skeleton and yes, everything else. Yes, it's intense. Um, and that took, but that gave me something to focus on. So I do get the side hustle. I think that's really important. It also kind of rounds you off as a person. It means there's, uh, like I said, adding more strings to your bow. Um, and just, my, it's another passion of mine that I may as well become more knowledgeable with and 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 become like a better version of me I think that's what I was trying to figure out in lockdown too just and, helping and myself would you say that um exercise is probably your go-to for for mental health mm, it's definitely a therapy of mine I, I feel like if I can't get out of my head go and get, go for a run get out get some fresh air or even if it's just putting on one of your favorite workouts at home while no one's watching and you can just be and do and you know sweat it out uh I sometimes get clearer thoughts once I have Mm. that endorphin rush to me is a a thing I don't believe it's just like I made up no Um, it's definitely not I love going for a run it's it's the best thing ever and as much as it's so can be so laborious sometimes like when you get back you're like yes yes and you can do anything like (laughs) I feel like that every time I've done a class um, I'm ambassador for Block in Manchester and I just love it there because all the different classes that they have challenge me in so many different ways. One could be bar, which is very much ballet based and uh, it feels like it's very uh, like a legs and bums tums, you know, one of yeah. those uh, traditional kind of dance classes. And then you've got box size and box flex and then it's just it, you can go on and on and on. And I love that that's always there. Because if I'm not feeling myself or if I'm totally like stuck in a rut or maybe I am just in a mood, a full on like, <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm just, just in a mood. mood. If I'm just in a funk, I honestly think 
fitness is my go-to to just get me out of that. I feel to- so much better. It sort of lifts everything, gets my heart going, um, pumps that blood around, gets gets to um, just my brain wakes up and I suddenly go, what was I beating myself up for? And why was I being such a, a negative nunny? Like I'm, I'm here now, I'm back. And I'm, I'm alive really with fitness. So that's my reckoning and reason as to why I choose that. I mean, personally, I'm I'm really worried about like the mental health impact that the pandemic is having yeah. at the minute. You know, so many job losses, heightened an- anxiety. How are you feeling about it? I mean, what what are your concerns? Um, oh, goodness me. I mean, if I can relate to my sister who was made redundant at the beginning of the year, so she was then looking for a job. Um, come February, March, when we heard about this new disease this new virus that was going around um and it wasn't such a kind of colossal challenge that we had to face it wasn't at that time and so she was putting herself up for all of these jobs I was doing the same but in my field so we're two different um paths two different careers and we were both struggling and back and forth, back and forth, telling each other about the knockbacks and this wasn't quite right and actually they're looking for this and mine was, oh, they've gone with someone younger or, <laughs> you know, the same old kind of, I was, I'm used to it and I think it was new for my sister, but we used kind of like helped one another to get through that. And it's come, we've come out of lockdown now um, and it's still difficult. It's still not 100%. Yes, I have something to look forward to for 2021 and starting training next week. My sister is still getting the knockbacks. And so her industry is struggling. And for me, I can see that it's having an effect on her spirit. I can see that it, she's not herself. And I know that she needs her job just to just feel like she's that independent chick that can mm-hmm. do anything. She's always been, she's my older sister too. So I admire her and I look up to her and I hope that eventually she'll it's all about timing as well I think but with with COVID I just think it's hit everyone in such a different way because I had those days in lockdown where I just started crying for no apparent reason and I don't know why just like in this interview I don't know why (laughs) just came over me like a ton of bricks and it washed me it drained me and I I then had to just pick myself up again. And and then when an audition came along, I was so excited because it was an opportunity to, you know, go into a different character and and channel my skill and and take my mind off the pandemic for maybe a day. And then the next day it was like Groundhog Day again. And so I don't know how that is having an effect on families. I don't know how that's having an effect on people that are, you know, struggling with an income um furloughed you know all of that it's it's insane but I hope I really hope and I pray that as a community as I mean definitely northern Manchester we are very much so in that mindset of if we all come together and we all just rally on through and pick each other up hopefully we'll come out this the other side and we'll have opportunities um and I know a lot of people are looking at other sectors like yourself you know Mm -hmm. this podcast is something that's definitely a side hustle for you but it's doing so well and that's amazing so I'm applauding anybody that does take on something on the side because it's something that I definitely looked into and I'm still not putting that to bed I will continue with that just so happens that I've got to put skates on now and do a completely (laughs) different (laughs) um challenge but yeah I mean what worrying worrying what would be your advice to anybody because as you said then you know you you kind of pick yourself back up and you you've You've done that and your sister's I, kind of I think of I had to train myself yeah. to do that in a way. I feel like, and not to be um, saying that everybody should do this and this is mm. what works for me, so it should work for you. It won't. I can't promise everybody that actually if you go and do a bit of fitness that you feel alive and you feel like you can conquer the world like I do. I know everyone's made up of, of you know, different stuff and this is just my opinion on what helped me with my mental health, um, we're definitely with getting out of my head because I can be my worst self-critic. Um, I put myself down all the time. I'm so insecure. Don't tell people that a lot. I really don't. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> but I just told a lot of yeah. people. And I think it's because I don't, I don't put it out there to the universe yeah. because I'm all about that. So whatever you put out there, you're going to get it back. 
So if you keep telling yourself that you're no good, you're worthless. Yeah, you're going to probably feel that way because you've said it so many times that you believe it. So I just think start with something small. Start with something that makes you happy. So something that makes you smile, something that actually fills your soul with something that's positive and go from there because it's a day to day learning curve, I think, for everyone. Yeah, I think it is. It's that that negative self talk can be so damaging. We had uh, the most incredible woman, Griselda Togobo, on the on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, and honestly, I walked away going, "Oh my god, I'm like a different person." Oh. Because she she talks about neg- uh, negative self talk and and the labels that are given to us mm. and how you can start to. Um, inherently become those those labels because you're constantly telling your brain that's that's who you are if you flip the switch and you know not not to to become super arrogant or big-headed or anything but just that actually you do have value and you you everyone does yeah you have you've got something to offer you've got something to give something to bring to the table and even in those dark days and you know days are very dark at the minute there's still a little tiny bit of fire still yeah. burning in there that I think just needs a little fan now and again you exactly. know just kind of just wake yourself up and say no I am good enough and I am I am I am enough basically yeah. and that you know we're all going through this together as you said as a community it's 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 it is reaching out to people isn't it it is mm. kind of saying oh that's me that's me you know and putting your hand up and going oh I'm having a bad yeah. time me too oh my god I cried too yeah, yeah all and, of and bringing it together so that we are collectively going through this and mm. not not solo not um not it being even though we're in isolation not being isolated and being able yeah. to reach out to people and what a format that you know with Instagram and the zoom chat yeah. and house party you know all these things that came out of lockdown were a good thing because it made us realize well we can do it all now and some people can actually change you know not being away from their family so much being yeah. at home working from home that's great like those things I think of the positives and we should take them away more definitely I mean going back to musical theater you've had okay some huge <laughs> leading roles. <laughs> um, including a highly acclaimed portrayal of the fabulous Elle Woods, which was just brilliant, in Legally Blonde. I mean, is this is this something you want to go back to after you've been on the ice? Oh, please let me go back. I miss it so much. I love just live. I mean, this is the one thing I think I actually annoyed my castmates with when we were at Coronation Street because I still would be kind of like, ooh, you know, like, let's do a one take wonder, you know, let's do it one. <laughs> no, 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 like, we hate this, we want to do it again. Like, that's the joy of TV. If we mm. get it wrong, we can do it again. If we, me- if we mess our words up, it's fine. Retake. I'm like, okay, okay. And it was the live, the 50th um, anniversary live episode for Carnation Street when I was joining. So I didn't get quite in on that episode because I was October. Oh. So it was this time five years ago that I left, uh, that I joined, sorry. And so, when I was um, there on set, kind of like tap dancing before a take, it was just something that's in me. I love it and I miss it. And I would pray like that I get a job like that next year. And hopefully, <laughs> well, maybe but- after dancing on eyes, they'll be like, oh yeah, let's get her back on stage. Well, oh, she said it, she's put it out there, guys. Come on now. <laughs> Send it to the universe, <laughs> ask and you shall receive. Yeah, well, I was literally just about to say, you know, do you enjoy the adrenaline rush of life? <laughs> Clearly, Fade does. I do. I think it's just about being on your front foot you know, being ready to go at anything. And I quite like that, like the whole um, anticipation to, yeah, it could go wrong, but let's just go ahead and see what happens. And with live, you couldn't get it wrong. And that's what I suppose that that those boundaries, that structure, we rehearsed for four weeks. You know, we knew this job inside Mm. and out and things change with audiences and different casts come up uh, often on stage all the time, especially if, you know, someone might... um, go on holiday and so their um, understudy steps in. I kind of love that that would just shift the energy and change the dynamic. And I, I, I think that's- It what's... always feels like it's a new show Re- when that happens. Every time, every time. I love that. That's what people used to say about Panto. Oh my God, you're going to do the same thing every day. I was like, it changes. Every day it changed <laughs> because someone found something else funny or maybe someone didn't really get enough sleep and they were just like going do lally and said something wrong and it made someone else laugh. And it's just this 
domino effect and it carried through the cast and it was magic because everybody then was on the same wavelength and it, it just produced something new every day. Yeah. I mean, for, for me personally, I, I get really stressed when it's live. And Do I think, you? yeah, I think it's because it's out of my control and I'm a real control freak. Okay. I like everything to be exactly how I like it. Okay. So for you, I mean, do you think that that, you know, letting it go out there and kind of just okay, let's let's just go, like being on a roller coaster. Do you enjoy that side? I don't of it? like rides though. Like, really? Luckily, you're saying I'm this junkie. I think <laughs> I just like a challenge. I don't really like upside down rides. I may go on a few fast ones, but I don't like it. It doesn't. My tummy just flips, and I just get so nervous. I don't know why. That doesn't really reflect in my day to day routine or just my a general energy for life, but. Um, maybe that's because that's out of my control. I can't, maybe. that's a machine that's taking over. But yeah, when it comes to this whole adrenaline junkie thing, I think <laughs> I'm a bit of a mix, I do. Whereas I'm a scaredy cat. I'm like, no, no, don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Thanks. No, 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 not for me. But um, I mean, are you looking forward to, because um, obviously with going on to Dancing on Ice, you know, mm. which is just such a brilliant platform for you, hopefully to move back into that other musical theater arena and hopefully by that time our theaters will be open oh, and we'll have that joy yes, please. are you looking forward to being a, a source of light in the darkness yes that's what it's all about I mean gosh I hope I can come away from this podcast and I hope I've given some sort of energy down this microphone to someone at home but um that's what I do this for like it's just knowing that I'm putting a smile on someone's face or they've gone home and they're like it's it, the impression that you leave with someone. I would just remember all these young girls when I was playing Princess Fiona coming dressed as Princess Fiona Aww. to watch the show. And as soon as you saw that, you knew you were being a little like guiding light for some girl's future. And if she wanted to be a princess, she can be a princess. Like, I just love that. So if I can bring joy, I will bring joy. And hopefully after Dancing and Ice, we'll see. Oh, Faye, you've brought so much joy to me today. <laughs> I've literally like, wow, that's just gone so fast. <laughs> I mean, literally like we've we've, just run out of time now but thank you so thank much for you. getting here to see me today it's been an absolute pleasure to have you with me in the studio at literally at arm's I length know. like I can touch you social distance, social distance <laughs> but just to bring your lovely energy thank you so oh, much you. thank you so much and um, thank you also to you guys at home for tuning in and being part of our conversation we hope you've had a lovely time with us and if you're listening at night you've had a lovely little relax or even a cheeky glass of wine or you might even now feel re-energized to just jump up and do a fitness class <laughs> <laughs> um, lovely Faye will be hitting our screens in January on Dancing on Ice so do make sure you tune into that and if you'd like to keep up with her on Instagram you can find her at at Faye underscore Brooks if you'd like more well-being fashion and beauty content you can visit us at our website www.thecapsule.co.uk where you can also catch up with our previous podcast episodes by visiting the In Conversation page and subscribing to any of our podcast channels and YouTube please do leave us your rates and reviews as we have loved hearing your feedback feedback especially on this new series if you're a social butterfly you can also catch us on instagram and facebook at official capsule i will be back next week with another very lovely special guest but today all that's left for us to say is goodbye so it's goodbye from Faye, goodbye guys <laughs> and goodbye from me this episode of the capsule in conversation was brought to you by we cure Specialists in EMDR, trauma and mindfulness therapy, WeCure offers one-of-a-kind treatments whilst you reflect and heal in the Mediterranean. Reset your mind and well-being. Speak to WeCure. WeCure.co.uk forward slash capsule.